This is the 25th video in the video series of Orbital Mechanics of Python. This one, I'm going to be going over Lambert's problem. So what Lambert's problem is, is when you have two position vectors and a time of flight in between them, and then you want to find the orbit from those position vectors. So I have an example here of an Earth to Mars transfer, where your initial position vector is going to be the position of Earth uh, whenever you want to leave Earth, whenever you want to launch. And the second position vector is going to be the position of Mars whenever you want to arrive. And you have some sort of time of flight in between them. So Lambert's problem is a boundary value problem, which is different than an initial value problem, because when you propagate orbits, it's an initial value problem because you have a differential equation and you know all the states at the initial time. Whereas this boundary problem, we just know some of the states at different amounts of time. So we know the state, uh, the position state, but we don't know the velocity state at time zero. We know a time and then we know the position at time one, but we don't know the velocity or the rest of the state from that. So that's how they differ between each other. And there's 3D and 2D components to this because obviously this is a 3D problem in general because space is in 3D. But this is actually a 2D when you get into the geometry of it because two orbits or two vectors make a plane. And Lambert's problem assumes a Keplerian orbit, which means just a two body orbit with no perturbations. So when these two vectors will always make a plane, which is going to be the plane of the orbit of the transfer in between them. Even if, say, the Earth trajectory is on a different inclination than the Mars trajectory, which they are, this transfer orbit is planar. So I'm not going to get too much deeper into the geometry and math of it, so I just want to show some papers, and I'll post the links in the descriptions that kind of go deeper into it, because I wouldn't be doing anyone much service, since they would know how to explain it better than I would. Um, but there's been a lot of famous people that have worked on this problem, people like Euler, Lambert, Lagrange, and uh, Gauss, so a lot of the famous names, and a bunch of other people. Um, so I just wanted to show, this is a paper from ESA, European Space Agency, that kind of just goes over more of the geometry and math behind it, uh, which I'll put in the link in the description, but again, I'm not going to explain it too much. But So uh, from ESA, they say that Lambert's theorem states at the time of flight uh, to travel along Keplerian orbit, orbit, which is a two-body, no perturbations, from position vector 1 to position vector 2 is a function of the semi major axis, the sum of the norms of those, and the chord C where the chord C is just the position uh, or the line in between um, the states. So it's pretty simple, and it's pretty simple to calculate. And then they, again, go deeper into everything that's going on using things like eccentric anomaly that I've shown before, hyperbolic anomaly, uh, mean motion, and all that type of stuff. And then I also found a paper from NASA from 1969, so pretty old, but again, just goes over all the math that's going on here. So it's an inverse square law, gravitational inverse square law, central force field. So that's just the... Um, force due to gravity, their acceleration due to gravity, distances R1, R2 from the center at time one and time two, all that then just goes into all the geometry, which again, I'll post links to this. So if you're interested in more of the geometry side of it, you can uh, take a deeper look. So as far as what applications there are of the Lambert's problems, there's actually quite a few and they're pretty important. So the first is orbital transfers. So as I showed in the previous example, you can get interplanetary transfers or a good estimate of them, kind of a preliminary estimate with this Lambert's problem, because we already know what the positions of the planets are going to be at any time. So that's for that. And then also for rendezvous. So if you want to rendezvous two uh, spacecraft in orbit, um, you want to change the orbit of one spacecraft to the other to catch up to or get to wherever the second one is. So that you can use a Lambert's problem in that case. Pork chop plots, if you haven't seen those before, I'll show an example. But what they are is just a 2D grid of launch opportunities. So say I want to leave sometime in between July and August, and I want to get there next year, um, again, between July and August. So you can give it a range of dates, and then you uh, solve Lambert's problem for every single combination of dates and get a contour plot. So this is what the 2020 uh, pork chop plot for Earth-Mars looks like. Um, and it can be a lot at first and doesn't make any sense, but I'll explain it. So the first thing you want to see is these white lines. So the white lines represent um, the time of flight that it's going to take. So if you're down here, you're only at 100 uh, days of flight, 120, 140, all the way up to 480. So these are just contour plots. So everywhere along this line, it's always going to be 480 days of travel time. And the red is a C3, which is just your escape velocity squared, or the velocity you have on top of your um, escape velocity squared. So how much excess velocity you need in order to escape Earth's gravity. And you square that number. I'm not sure why it's squared, but that's just a convention, and it's called C3. So that's all the red lines. And you're looking for the ones that are the least. So here you see 14, 16, 18. So it's rising up here. So you want to stay around the 14 uh, to kind of find um, at least delta V. Uh, I'm explaining how to find like at least delta V uh, trajectory. And then V infinity is the blue, where V infinity is how much excess velocity you have when you get to Mars and how much, basically how much velocity you have to shave off in order to capture yourself at Mars. 
agency numbers here are four, five, six, seven, eight. But then here is actually the smallest one on this contour plot is a three. Uh, zooming into that. Right there is a three. So basically what you want to do is you want to find the intersection of the lowest B infinity and the lowest C3 and see where it is. So for this, if you follow this three contour, it meets the 14 contour about right here, which is corresponds to about 180 days of travel time. So that's what that is. And that's basically what the Mars 2020 um, spacecraft is going to do. A cruise duration of roughly seven months. And then you have a trajectory that looks like this, which is what oh, that trajectory looks like right there. Oh, go back to that. That's what this trajectory looks like that. So just solving the language problem, you can get a pretty good accuracy if you want to do a high thrust maneuver uh, from one planet to the other. And then other applications of this is orbit determination. So if you have a satellite and you have two observations, you have two position vectors and a time between them, you can estimate the orbit of that satellite. And the same thing is done with asteroids and comets. Once you have some observations of them, you can estimate the orbit. Uh, one of the methods is using Lambert's problems, and there's other uh, methods to do that as well. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, in the next video, I'm just going to show one solution to Lambert's problem because there's actually many out there. So one of the solutions is called the universal variable solution, which is what I use to make these plots. Uh, so this plot on the right is an Earth to Venus uh, transfer, doing a 90-day transfer. So that's the time between 90 days with two position vectors uh, to get to Venus. And I'll just go ahead and show examples of that. So that's it for this video, and thank you for watching.